In today's lesson, which is 3.5a in the book on page 161, we're going to be basically doing the opposite of what we've done in the last two lessons. We're going to be dividing. We're going to be finding a greatest common factor. We're not going to multiply over parentheses. We're going to work backwards and create that parentheses and, and through division, we're going to factor. So a little warm up that would help us is to think about greatest common factor. What is the greatest common factor of 4 and 12? Just follow along for a little bit here. I'll have you copy in a moment. What is the greatest common factor of 4 and 12? You might think 2 at first, but greatest would be 4. I'm sure you could all get that. 15 and 25, greatest common factor, 5. They both end in 5. 6, 9, and 21. I can find all of those in my threes tables. So their greatest common factor, yes, is 3. Now the Singapore model shows two ways to do this. We can do it through the greatest common factor method, which is mostly what I'm going to use. But you can also draw it out using the bar model. And we're going to factor 2a minus 4. Well, I can see that they both have a 2 in common. 2a and negative 4 both have a 2 in common. So I could think of it as two groups. Two groups. I could take a 2 out of a minus 2. So if I was going to draw that, I would draw two groups of a's. Two groups of a's minus 2. And you can see that this is in the book. There's a minus 1, and there's a minus 1. Here's a minus 1, and here's a minus 1. So I have two groups. Here's my first group on the top, and another second group of a minus 2. So two groups of a minus 2. They have a 2 in common. So factoring 2a minus 4, it looks like 2 times the quantity a minus 2. Well, to factor using the greatest common factor, yes, the greatest common factor, as you saw me use in the bar model, is 2. So I would divide each term of my binomial by my greatest common factor, 2. Well, 2 halves gives me an a, and 4 divided by 2 gives me negative 4 divided by 2 gives me a negative 2. And I would put a parenthesis around that because that's what my expression equals when I do this division. My common factor comes out in front of my parentheses. So I'm going backwards to what we were doing the other day where we were multiplying over this parentheses to get the binomial 2a minus 4. So we're kind of working backwards. We're undistributing the factor of 2 and putting it outside the parentheses. So I have a factor of 2 and I have a factor of a minus 2 to give me 2a minus 4 factored correctly. So let's factor a few more of these. So your goal is to think what do 3a and 6b have in common? Well they don't have a and b in common but they do have a factor of 3 in common. So if you divide each of the terms by the 3, 3 divided by 3 would give me an 1, so I'd have 1a. 6 divided by 3 gives me a 2, two b's. Put a parenthesis around that. The common factor that you factored out goes out in front. 3 times the quantity a plus 2b is the factored form of 3a's plus 6b. Number 2, again, thinking what do 3x and 9, negative 9y nine have in common? Well, x and y is not common, but again, a factor of 3 is common to both of these. So taking out that 3, I have 3 divided by 3, I'm going to get 1x, and negative 9 divided by 3, I'm going to get negative 3y's. Bring along that y. So the parentheses goes around that binomial that I have, and I put my common factor out in front. So 3x minus 9y in factored form, taking out what they have in common, that 3, putting it in front of the parentheses, the answer is 3 times the quantity x minus 3y. Number 3, 6a's minus 18b's. Well, I could 
could see that they have a three in common again, but greater than three, they both have a six in common. So I'm going to factor out a six. 6a divided by 6 would give me 1a's, 1a, and negative 18 divided by 6 would give me negative 3. Bring along that b, put a parenthesis around that, and put your common factor out in front. So 6a minus 18b's in factored form is 6 times the quantity a minus 3b. Two more of them. And hopefully you're copying these, if I didn't already say so. Whoops. Um, hopefully you copied those examples. So 2j and negative 10k have a 2 in common. 2 in 10, common factor, 2. So 2j's divided by 2 would give me 1j. And a negative 10 divided by 2 would give me negative 5k's. Put a parenthesis around it. Put my common factor out front. So 2 times the quantity j minus 5k is the factored form of 2j minus 10k. 8p's minus 12q's, number 5. Well, 8 and 12 have a 4 in common. So I'm going to pull out that 4. 8p's divided by 4, 8 fourths, gives me 2p's. And negative 12 divided by 4 gives me negative 3q's parentheses around that, the factor that they have in common, that goes out front here. So my 4 that I divided out is going to go out in front of that parentheses. So I have 4 times the quantity 2p's minus 3q's. A great note here, how can you check to see that you're correct? And I did show you an example of this in class. Well, re-multiply that, redo the distributive property. How do I know that I factor the greatest common factor out? Take 4 and multiply it by 2p's. I get 8p's. 4 multiplied by negative 3q's. 4 times negative 3, negative 12q's. Did I get back to my original binomial up there? Yes, I did. So I know I factored it correctly. Let's check number 4. 2 times j, 2j's. 2 times negative 5k's negative 10 k's. Did I get back to the original expression? Yes. So a good way to check that you're factoring correctly is to re-multiply, apply the distributive property to make sure you get back to that original expression. One more. Now I have a trinomial here. Three different terms. 10 g's, negative 15 x, positive 35. Well, the only thing that I see that they, all three of them have in common, all three have in common is a 5, a factor of 5. So if I divide each term by 5, I should get a factored form of this. So 10 fifths gives me 2, 10 divided by 5, 2 g's, bring along my g. Negative, oh, negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3x. And 35 divided by 5, positive 35, positive 35 divided by 5, positive 7. The parentheses around all of that, long trinomial, put your common factor out front. And again, we can check this. Do the distributive property. 5 times 2 g's, 10 g's. 5 times negative 3 x, pay attention to your signs, negative 15 x. 5 times positive 7, positive 35. Did I get back to my original expression, 10 g's, negative 15 x, positive 35? Yes, so I know I factored that correctly. We could see this in a word problem. As you saw some of the distributive ones in word problems, now we can do factoring in a word problem. An SSR book has an area of 9 m minus 30 n quantity square units. Its width is three units. Factor the expression for the area to find an expression for the length of the rectangle. So area equals length times width for a rectangle. A book is a rectangle. So finding just the area of the top of that book, obviously. Um, 
we have area equals length times width. So if I take the area and I divide it by the width, I should get the length. I've got to find an expression for the area to find an expression for the length of the rectangle. So I've got to solve this for the length. What's the length if the area is 9m minus 30n? And I'm going to factor out my width of 3. So divide by 3. 9 m's divided by 3, 9 thirds is 3 m's, and negative 30 divided by 3 is negative 10 m's. So my length is the expression 3 m minus 10 n units. Square units goes on area, but units goes on just the length. Now, notice I'm not putting the 3 out in front of here because I don't want to show width times length. I don't want to show that width out here. Width times length it says just find the expression for the length. So notice this time I didn't put the 3, the common factor, out front because I only wanted to find just the length. And this is the length, 3m's minus 10n units. So in this case, I didn't put the 3 out front. Normally, we would do that. That would be the factored form of this expression. But that's the width, and I only want to find the length. So that's it for today. Uh, we'll be in class and work on some problems about factoring.